what's going on guys welcome back to the part three of the e46 endurance race car build for the lemons race today we got treated to some early christmas as you could see we got quite a bit of deliveries and more of the way scheduled to be delivered today so today we're going to accomplish or fix some of the issues that i talked in the prior video that we didn't get to do if you haven't checked it out make sure you go see that so we're gonna be unpacking all of this and installing it right into our e46 lemons race car that big box right there is our race seats which uh, i'm gonna show you in a bit but uh now let's prep everything so we could uh start working on some of the the parts that came in one of the things we're gonna address today is the uh brakes the brake lines amongst other things so uh it's gonna be a quite busy day when we were installing the headers we also found some other areas that we need to address uh, to make this car a uh, race and, and safety legal uh, that is underneath right here check this out that's quite a movement that's uh that's non-safe it will definitely not pass tech inspection as well as the cv uh, axle is 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 uh you could hear it popping when turning so we have to replace that and it's the same thing on this side as well i'm sure if you could see right there so we have to address both cv axles on both sides and uh, replace the arms other than that underneath we check the rear stop right as well and uh the uh the subframe bracket or the uh the whole cage is kind of rusted but the good news is subframe does not look like it's has any major cracking like most of these vehicles do and uh, reason one of the reason for this is because this is a four-wheel drive so uh, these cars tend to have less of an issue since the load is distributed up front as well but it's definitely been uh, in the rust belt this uh, this car because the the, the subframe uh, cage is, is really rusted out so yeah but other than that we haven't really uh discovered anything underneath aside from the um from the control arms that, and the cv joints uh that we need to address let me show you our race seat that are gonna we're gonna be running in this car we got we went with this race race quip uh race seat this is uh, this model right here. It's a, uh, doesn't have a specific name, but it's a FIA rated, good till 2026. And uh, this is how it looks. Uh, it's, I don't know if you could tell, but this thing is humongous. Uh, reason being is because one of our driver drivers, Chris in particular is pretty big. He's uh, about six foot two, six foot three guy. He's very wide, so all of our, all of us, the smaller guys, we have to accommodate him. So this thing we call this the the love seat. I mean, this is humongous. I basically sit in it and I have room left or right. So we'll have to get some cushioning to accommodate all the smaller drivers. But this is the um, the seat that we went with. It's quite inexpensive. I think we paid around. Four hundred and eighty dollars or so for it, which is not too bad for FIA rated race seat. So we'll see how this fits in our kind of small E46 car. Look, look how wide this thing is from side to side. This thing is, oh my god, like it, it could probably fit. Not uh, maybe not two of me, but maybe if I was smaller. Yeah, but uh, that's crazy. I didn't think it would be this big, but hey, it is what it is. So this is our race seat. Ah, uh, we're gonna address the front uh, axle first. We taking care of the uh, the front uh, brakes and uh, dismounting the whole hub, so we can replace the uh, hubs 
uh, not the hubs, the control arms beneath. So we're gonna take the brakes first. Uh, thread tip is go you know, like this, ah. you know, like that. See? Okay. Uh, so he's working on that side, and uh, this side is ready to dismount it, and we're gonna dismount the axles uh, shortly. While we have the axle out, we're also going to change the control arm and this faulty ball joint since we have extra room now. And to try it, all you do is uh, rent one of these uh, pick forks. You just hammer it down and it'll pop out. I already did that, so it's already loose. You gotta strap it down and uh, we could continue removing the uh, control arm. And these are our replacement parts. This is the axle and this is the control arm. The funny part, part about this is I this was literally $28. I mean, I was very skeptical at first. I thought it was going to be made out of paper or something, but it arrived and it's looking fine. It's definitely heavy steel. This axle has obviously been reconditioned, but that's all right. Uh, normally, we'll probably be putting some higher quality parts on this uh, gem but since this is a lemons build we're going um, as low as cost possible and we have the control arms and this new cv axles installed again for budget parts the fitment is quite good nothing to complain about there we obviously have brand new ball joints now everything is nice and tight or we should be good to go right now we have also addressed the uh, brake lines we replaced uh, them uh, the rubber ones which were cracked with some quality stainless steel braided lines from uh, Bimmer World thankfully there is no uh, budget on the safety items for the lemons race so uh, that's not one area that you want to be cheaper on so we went with the uh, trusted brand and we also put new uh, rotors and uh, for the pads, we uh, we chose to run the DTC 60 Hawk uh, race pads, which should be good for this car for its weight and capabilities. It should provide us with good stopping power. Uh, we went, uh, we got all of that stuff from FCP Euro, which will definitely pay off in the long run due to their lifetime replacement warranty. So that's a major plus. Now we also in installed our brand new tires we gonna be using the hancock rs4 tires uh they are very popular tire for endurance races due to the uh low wear ratio on these tires these tires literally last forever if you're running them properly so uh, we're looking forward on um how they will perform on this car we also found uh there's a vacuum leak somewhere in the system and I think I located one spot for it and that is this uh, this boot right here is cracked right there so we have to replace that amongst one of the things and also uh, somebody hacked the Disa valve here so we will have to address this as well it was literally I already uh, dismounted it before it was literally glued on and uh, let me show you real quick oh boy somebody uh just i don't know melted this and uh, this part is not even connected it was just stuck in inside and not functioning at all so that was definitely a factor of poor performance for this engine and inside it's kind of gross as well I, uh, I think this car ran with a vacuum leak for quite some time because there's quite a bit of oil inside and uh, it's just basically pull, pulling oil from the uh, from the cr crankcase easy way to tell if you have a vacuum leak is if try to loosen the oil filler cap while the car is running and if if it's hard to remove or it has it like a tendency that to stick and when you lifted the idle changes that means you have a vacuum leak somewhere so uh, we definitely have a vacuum leak and that was the um, the boot is probably one of the reasons if not something else which we're about to find out but we're gonna address that in the uh, next video
now that we have uh, brakes and suspension issues sorted out we could drop the car and address the alignment make sure the car is aligned for our first test day which is coming up in about a week a week and a half time so uh, we're very excited about uh, testing it out and see what possible areas we need to address before we uh, actually start putting the cage in